This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and gaming laptop extravaganza continues thanks to the launch of NVIDIA Pascal 10 Series graphics cards for laptops here for the fall of 2016. And we've done quite a few now, and this is going to round up our first round of reviews. And this is one of my favorites from previous generations of reviews. It's the MSI Dominator Pro GT72 VR. Now, we've reviewed the Dominator Pro before, and in fact, I own one. It's a last generation this year. So been very happy with it. One of my top picks. So now we have NVIDIA GTX 1070 graphics inside. So the Dominator Pro has the 1070. The Dominator Not Pro has the 1060. And these are at the higher end of NVIDIA's gaming laptop line for the 17-inch models here. If you want to go even higher, the only thing higher is the Titan model. And that has NVIDIA 10. 80 graphics inside. So we're looking at the Dominator Pro line right here, and you've got all sorts of amenities you expect from a gaming laptop. Quad-core i7 45-watt CPU, obviously that NVIDIA graphics card, SSD plus hard drive bay inside, lots of RAM, good display options, even a 120 hertz wide color gamut display option. Good to see this MSI finally stepping up their display games. So all of that, and it's $19.99. So we've seen some very expensive laptops that we reviewed recently that were $3,500 or so. So this one I think is a lot more attainable for those of you who want to spend some serious bucks, but not go insane with it. We're going to look at it now. As you've no doubt figured, since it says Exotic PC on here, Exotic PC has provided us with this review loaner. For those of you who don't know who they are, they sell a variety of gaming laptops, not just MSI brand. And uh, same price that you're going to find in other stores. They don't raise the prices, but they'll do a lot of customizations for you. If you want to have your parts ingrate, upgraded, get a faster SSD, swap out a hard drive, uh, different RAM, better RAM, all sorts of things like that, they'll do that. And they put their, their skin on it. And they, they also offer, well, obviously, skinning services. So for those of you who want to know what it looks like without, here is my last gen model, which uses the same chassis and the same color. So this is what it looks like normally when you buy it from well, any place that doesn't put a skin on it. Brushed black aluminum lid with the usual Dragon logo. It kind of always reminds me of the Ferrari logo a little bit. Pretty understated other than, well, that logo. It's a nice enough looking machine. And there's good lid rigidity here, but not fantastic. It's the only thing that does have flex. And it's every single MSI laptop is like that. They design it to be as thin as possible, the lid, so there's a little bit of flex. It doesn't bother me, but if that sort of thing freaks you out, well, there it is. So the front edge is the thinnest and the sleekest, but uh, don't be fooled. If we if we turn this around, as always with gaming laptops, they do get fatter at the back, but this is one of the thicker among the 17-inch gaming laptops, 1.88 inches, which is 48 millimeters. The weight's not bad, though, at 8.33 pounds, which is 3.78 kilograms. Uh, that's about on the lower side of average for a 17.3-inch gaming laptop. What you do get is plenty of room for thermals, which means cooling, so the thing is not hot, not loud, even if you're playing today's most demanding games. And that's well, sweetness. And that's true of many, but not all, other big gaming laptops. We just recently looked at the Origin PCE on 17X, and that one's a 17-inch with some pretty powerful internals, and my god, it's as loud as a vacuum cleaner. But the Asus G752 Rogue that competes with this, for example, it's also pretty cool and quiet. Plenty of room for ports. We're going to talk about those now. Now on the back, obviously we have plenty of ventilation. And again, this chassis has been the same overall for about two years or so. It's just the ports mostly that change. One port that is new, if you're coming from a gen couple of generations back, is this USB-C port right here. And now, if you look closely, you notice they put a sticker over it. That's to say it's USB-C Gen 2, probably because they have models also with Thunderbolt 3, and they're saving a little money by using a sticker there. Okay, that's a little cheese ball, but okay. Next to it, we have the display port and gigabit Ethernet. That's killer E2400 Ethernet. And obviously, the connector for the big 230-watt power supply. SD card slot, of course. And then notice all the nice gold-plated audio jacks here. MSI always goes with a nice, high-quality audio jack and some decent audio software here. And you get headphone jack, mic jack. You even get SPDIF optical out. So for those of you who are into music production, MSI is certainly a good brand to consider. For USB 3.0 ports on the side there, you're not going to be needing USB hub most likely with this one, are you? And on this side, two more USB 3.0 ports and something that's actually, well, kind of cool. A good old-fashioned DVD burner drive, an optical drive. See, a lot of 17-inch gaming laptops have actually dropped those. Again, like 
the Acer Predator 17, actually we looked at the Origin Eon 17 inch machine, there, it's going the way of the dobo, dodo bird. And for those of you who actually are burning media, say you are doing music production, I, you're actually installing games that still came on DVDs. We remember those days not so long ago. It's useful to have. It's up to you as to whether you find that useful or necessary or not, but well, it doesn't hurt anything by being there, certainly. And MSI is very good at engineering gaming laptops. They found a way to put all the other internals in there without needing that space. And the bottom side with our colorful ventilation, again, same chassis they've been using for a while. That certainly is plenty of ventilation. It's probably part of what does help it to run cool. As ever with gaming laptops, don't put this on a blanket when you're gaming. You know, you're going to muffle and stifle the poor thing. We have the quad-core Intel i7-6700 HQ CPU in here. That is a standard high-end part for laptops. This is not a desktop CPU inside. If you go up to the Titan model, you can get the, the overclockable, even better i7 mobile CPU in here if you want. Plenty of RAM, plenty of upgradable parts, and screws here around the edges. These are all Phillips head and one's in the center, and MSI always has their, their usual do not uh, open this up at, it's at your own peril thing just to scare you, which is already taken off of this because Exotic PC has upgraded our SSD in this model for us. After that, you just pry off the bottom cover here to open it up. And looking at the internals, two large fans, obviously effective, nice, high quality fans. Cooling heat pipes over here, socketed GPU, but we won't even talk about that because obviously uh, upgradable GPUs have not gone well for MSI moving up to Pascal. For those of you who are hoping to get an upgrade card in the mail, it seems to be an exchange program we're going to get instead for that. Two RAM slots visible here. The other two should be on the other side facing uh, the keyboard, which is really a pain in the neck, but oh well. Here's your Wi-Fi card right here. It's, this is the subwoofer, which is pretty effective. Battery is under here. This is our SSD right here, which has been upgraded by the folks at Exotic PC to the nice 950 Pro Samsung drive. Over here, you can see where there would be space for another SSD. I'm guessing that the Titan model probably has a socket for that. Here is our 2.5-inch drive bay with a spinning... Hitachi drive inside. You can put a two and a half inch SSD if you want in here. And here it looks like a perfect spot for a, another hard drive or a two and a half inch SSD, whichever you choose. But obviously there's no connector over here to actually do anything with it. So obviously a big keyboard deck. This is aluminum here on the keyboard deck. The bottom obviously is plastic. Um, nice looking, shows fingerprints. You can already see some fingerprint oil and we cleaned it just before shooting this video. This is a Synaptics trackpad with stiff, clicky buttons. Uh, too stiff. It's going to dislocate my thumb joint. Okay, that's an exaggeration. But honestly, I don't know what it is MSI does to trackpads to kind of mess them up, but they always find a way. Not as hideous as they were several years ago. This one is not likely to create file system mishaps unless you put two fingers on the trackpad at once. This is Synaptics. Usually they make good trackpads. You can see the software right up there on the screen to control it. And two fingers, it just doesn't really work for me at all. I put two fingers on and all that happens is the cursor jumps about an inch to the right. I haven't been able to do any two finger scrolling or anything like that, but the, the single finger motions, those work just fine at least. Nothing devious happens there. The keyboard is the usual Steel Series RGB programmable backlit keyboard. Really nice key travel on here. Good tactile feel, good damping. They don't make any noise. Anti ghosting technology, and this is controlled by the Steel Series. The Steel Series on the button over here, we got those little shortcut buttons. That one will cycle through the various backlight settings that you've selected, or you can go into the Steel Series software yourself and set up custom colors. Now above here, this is you can assign that to whatever you want. By default, it's designed to exploit game cast area. You can change that if you want. This maxes out the fan when it's plugged in. If it's not plugged in, you won't hear a difference. And the fans will be very audible then in a way that they never are when actually gaming or benchmarking. This will turn the display on and off. And this obviously is the power button as the power symbol. So if you had a dominator from a couple of years ago, you know, there used to be a hardware muck switch. So you could switch between dedicated and integrated graphics. That is gone. This is always running on dedicated graphics. It has G-Sync on board, which is required to use NVIDIA dedicated graphics there. So I, I think between that and HDMI 2.0 output, a lot of manufacturers are, are doing away with any kind of switching and just going with the hardware dedicated graphics at all times. So performance, you know, the news is going to be good here. This is one of the more, more powerful gaming laptops available. Again, quad-core i7-6700 HQ, that's 45-watt mobile CPU. Powerful stuff in there. 
and of course the NVIDIA GTX 1070, which sits between the, the 1060 and the 1080. Now, if you get the Dominator Not Pro, again, you'll get the 1060, which is still a very capable card that beats last year's 980M in terms of benchmark performance and real-world gaming performance. If you get the 1070, you're getting that nice jump up. I'm, we're talking like at least 40% in performance improvement from the previous generation cards. Oh, nice. 1080 not available in the Dominator Pro. They have yet another model, the GS73 VR Titan, not to be confused with the 80 series Titan machines. But anyway, that one, you can get it with the GTX 1080 or you can get it with the Intel Core i7-6820 HK overclockable mobile CPU. And if you like it a little bit smaller, this kind of competes with the ASUS ROG GL502 VS that I recently reviewed. There's now a 15.6-inch Dominator Model 2. Um, mostly the same specs, just obviously smaller. are going to be a little bit hotter, a little bit louder, but it's still a chunky, monkey kind of beefy machine. So it's not a slim and light kind of laptop. It's not going to get that hot or that loud. There's also a model with Toby eye-tracking camera, if that's your thing. And at the very top of the line, there is the 18.4-inch GS83 VR Titan Pro. You can get that with SLI, two GTX 1080 cards. It's only $5,000, folks, or $4,000 with two GTX 1070 cards. All right, so that's the whole lineup there of the high-end laptops from MSI. And again, this is still going to be at the upper reaches of what you can get in the way of gaming laptops. So the performance is going to be good here. Good bang for the bucks, buck, honestly, compared to some more expensive models without the heat and the loudness that you might get with the 1080 or goodness knows with two 1080 cards inside. All of today's most demanding games it, at 1080p Ultra settings. You can you can play them at least 60 frame per second rates, often up into the upper 80s. So not only is that great for today, it tells you you're going to be ready for what's coming next year or the year after. 4K gaming, really you're going to need the 1080 for that if you'd like your 60 frame per second super smoothness going on. I, we range anywhere from the 40s to around 60 for most of today's most demanding games. Older games like Battlefield 4, of course, do much, much better. CPU and GPU temperatures are well controlled. This is a big chassis with plenty of ventilation. We'd expect as much. The hottest we saw the GPU get was 81 degrees centigrade. That's about four degrees hotter than we see in a lot of other gaming laptops, but that's not enough to actually be concerned. I think MSI is a little conservative with their fan tuning and they try not to blow it loud, especially considering you have access to that little fan button on the side if you really want the fans to ramp up. So uh, CPU temperatures, typically games don't hit those hard, so they stay in the 50s at most, 60 degrees centigrade when gaming. It's all good there. Other goodies include Bigfoot Killer, and that's Wi-Fi plus Ethernet. Now that's AC 1435 Wi-Fi instead of the 1535 we've seen in other gaming laptops with Killer, so it's a slight step down, but it's still good stuff inside. We have Nehemic Audio, and it's a pretty decent software setup, and you even can create virtual surround settings for your stereo speakers or headphones that kind of mimic having a 5.1 or 7.1 surround system. So maybe you have a little edge when you can hear the footsteps coming in a game. The Dominator is available with a 1920 by 1080 matte IPS non-touch display. Gaming laptops rarely have gloss screens or touch screens. There are a few exceptions. You could get the Razer Blade, which is a 14-inch gaming laptop with a gloss touchscreen, and Alienware certainly dabbles in that with their higher end, usually 4K models. This has G-Sync at 60 hertz, so it's going to lock in your games at 60 hertz, which is generally speaking a good thing for smooth, tear-free gameplay. You can see the difference. I like G-Sync a lot. There's also a 120 hertz display option with wide color gamma too. That's 1920 by 1080 matte also, and I'm really wondering if that's going to same display that they're using in the 17-inch Stealth Pro that has the same specs. Now, they're not mentioning whether it's TN or IPS very clearly for the Dominator. With the Stealth, it is a very high-end TN panel. I th think that they may be using a different IPS panel here. It, I would love to get that one in-house to test it out. If you want a 4K display, so far it looks like that's going to be something available in the Titan line. I have not seen a Dominator Pro yet with the 4K display offering, but uh, you know, MSI offers a million different sub-model numbers. This is the 015 for those of you who are trying to shop for this exact model here. And who knows what they're going to mix and match in the way of model numbers and parts in the end. Inside there's a nine cell battery and you know, 
Gaming laptops never have good battery life, especially if you've got one that's always running on dedicated graphics. So battery life here with, with productivity tasks is about three hours or so. 230 watt power brick, which is a very appropriate output for a laptop with these internals. And now it seems kind of small. Funny thing, I mean, that's a pretty decent sized brick, but compared to the 330 watt brick that you get with gaming laptops that either have a desktop CPU inside or the uh, NVIDIA GTX 1080, and you can see the difference, and there's a big difference in weight as well. So there it is, the MSI GT72 VR Dominator Pro in the 17-inch class of gaming laptops, high-end gaming laptops. It's pretty easy to recommend. Granted, it's one of the thickest ones on the market. It's not any heavier than the competition, though. But as always, MSI packs a lot of good cutting-edge technology inside for a price that's not obscene. And you get excellent gaming performance, a cool, quiet running chassis, pretty decent GPU and CPU temperatures inside too, upgradable internals, accessible, all that sort of thing, and some decent displays too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.